So Mayor Robin Lentz, thank you so much for having some coffee with me today. We appreciate, uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you, thanks for having me here. So Mayor Robin, you were mayor in 2016 to 2017. What have you been doing since? Well, I've enjoyed my private life. Um, <laughs> I run uh, Take Stock in Children and um, I cart kids. I'm what you call a professional moober. That's a mom Uber. So I'm driving kids to karate, gymnastics, swim, and soccer. So, and just, and working and um, really getting to enjoy this wonderful community that we've created. Um, hanging, you know, my husband and I have made some really great friends. We just celebrated our 20th wedding anniversary and um, we've lived in our house in the city now for 18 years. Wow. I know, a long time. So um, we've lived there long enough now that it actually needs repairs, you know. So um, we've just been living the mom and dad life and, and working hard and um, really so grateful uh, these last two years of COVID made us so grateful for the outdoor community that we have and all of our trails and our biking. Um, my 13 year old, he goes out for like a 14 mile bike ride by himself. Like he just loves where we live, you know? Um, so, and I'm PTO president at Fernandina Beach Middle School. Wow. Okay. So yeah. Mayor, hey, uh, yeah. I would have thought you'd be the president. You I know? mean, yeah. uh, do you see sucker tattooed right <laughs> across my forehead? Yeah. Sucker. And I imagine but, that would be just as hard as being the mayor, as being the PTO president. I mean, like it's uh, yeah, it's, a lot of... It's, it's a lot of the same because you run a meeting, <laughs> you run a meeting and you run a tight meeting and it's orderly and you have an agenda and you, you set it. Um, but it is very rewarding because I did work at that school for seven years. And so now that my own child is there, um, it's just such a sweet and special place. So I really enjoy it. I'm a crazy person. I like middle schoolers. Right. Takes a different kind of person that enjoys working with the middle school age, but I, I really do love it. I joke about how much work it is, but I have, we have a great set of parents and of um, it's awesome. Well, even though it's you're president, fun. Robin, I think I'm still going to call you Mayor Robin, if that's fine with you. It's you a, know, <laughs> yes, yes. And I hope to be calling you Mayor Bradley Bean hey, we're working in on November. It. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, hey, let's do it together. <laughs> let's do it. Well, just wanted to talk about a few things because number one, you might know, uh, we're voting for mayor differently this year. Uh, with the charter amendments uh, that we voted on last year, this is the first ever direct election for mayor that we've had in Fernandina Beach. Right, and that's a really exciting news because the people will actually get a real say in who they want the mayor to be. And I was thinking about it, what are gonna be some of your like big projects, some of your visions that you have for our city? Well, well, Mayor Robin, I, I know that uh, something that has been talked about to death, even back when you were on the commission mm -hmm, as the mayor, mm -hmm. is the waterfront. I right? knew you were going to say that. Here's the waterfront. Yeah. It's a, the waterfront is a, uh, the, the thing I want to get done is the river walk, which is, uh, and we've already got the first half, mm -hmm. which is uh, south of Bretts. That river walk is done. If you go there today, it is an amazing place to walk. I think it's been a great, the, the shell, the cross, the, the coquina material that we're using to build that, that river walk is something that people, I, it looks beautiful and it definitely does a job as a seawall protecting uh, from the storms, the possible hurricanes and king tides that we have. But the most important thing about it is it gives public access to our river. So mm -hmm. when they come down, if you're walking down Center Street, your walk's not done when you hit the water. You can, you can walk up and down the river. So phase two of that is going to be what's north of Brett's. Can we finish that river walk? Can we uh, build from Brett's all the way to the port? Can we build a complete river walk slash seawall project. And that's something that I really want to get done. That's going to take working with the private property owners that are between Brett's and, and the port. That is, there's six different private property owners. I, I think we've got good news that a lot of them are on board. They'll let this, this river walk come through their property. It should be a win-win. And the win for the public is that we have this public access that we could use this, uh, this river walk and I think that the future will thank us for, for our foresight to build this river walk as, as something that all can enjoy. Absolutely. I was just down there the other night and it is, it's just such a gorgeous um, area to be in. And I too am a big advocate for us creating more public space. Um, what do you think about adding some additional parks around town? What can we give me kind of the insight? I haven't been paying attention for five years. So tell me, give me the update. What's uh, going on in Parks and Rec? Well, Parks and Rec, there's always room to improve and, and make sure that we, we expand our, what we're having for our public spaces. There is a, uh, I think the most recent thing we added, you were on the commission for our Simmons Road uh, mm -hmm. Park, which is still looking great over there and we're taking care of that. 
Uh, future expansions, I think, involve taking care of what we currently have, right? We want to make sure that we update our, our existing parks. We have a lot of great parks all around. We want to make sure, uh, we already talked about this, uh, this donation to rebuild the playground in Central Park, but can we make sure that we have top of the line equipment on all our existing parks? So that's something that we're going to be looking forward to. Uh, with Parks and Rec, we also need to make sure that uh, things like the Rec Center, there, there's some needed renovations for that coming up. Let's make sure we budget appropriately for that. And finally, I mean, there's a possibility. Uh, can we get some more land into conservation? And that's something that uh, there's a possibility coming up down the road uh, for things close to the marsh. And we'll, and we'll talk about that later on, I think. Good, Absolutely. good. I think those are all those are all very important issues to our, our citizens. You know, we have a really diverse population here. Absolutely. And um, I feel like when I ran, I ran because I wanted to see someone representing like a young family. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to say, that's what I see in you because you even, there's an age difference between you and I, but I see you thinking about Fernandina for our future. So thank you for saying that about taking care of, of what we have, because it is important. And we have some really great assets to take care of. Talk to me a little bit about public safety. Um, what's, what is new? What's exciting with, that's going on with our public safety? Because, you know, I feel like we have the best police department and fire department around. But Hey, no doubt about that. Uh, police and fire here in Fernando Beach. I, uh, I don't want, know if I want to say this publicly, but sometimes I don't lock my car door right? because, uh, because it's, wait, wait, yeah, exactly. I won't, no, I, from now on, I will always lock my car door because I just said that, uh, right now, but, uh, but no, we are in a safe place. Uh, and that's something that we have with our, with our police and fire, uh, for fire, especially we're working on getting a new ladder truck, uh, mm -hmm. which, because, uh, this is important to have, can you get water from above? Mm -hmm. And even though we don't have we do have a lot of things that are tall in our community and we need to make sure we have this ladder truck. So that's a big expense. And, uh, and we're going to open this new fire station coming up real soon. I so know, it's exciting. It's big. It's big yeah. news. Uh, fire station number two is going to be really central to the Island. Our city has, has grown and this growth has reshaped the way our city mm -hmm. looks. So mm -hmm. our, uh, to make sure our fire department remains central, we're building our new fire station, more central and the old fire station. Number two is going to be closed down and, uh, moved to fire station number two about mm -hmm. by the airport. So Great. Really to that. What will happen with the future of the property where uh, Station 2 currently sits over there off of Fletcher and behind? That is a great question. Yeah, and, what's the plan and for that? I'll tell you, where, where we have right now is can it be a place, because what's also expanded in recent years is our is our Beach Ranger program, mm -hmm. our Ocean Rescue. And is that going to be their headquarters? That's actually still under discussion right now. There's a lot of uh, different ideas of what we can do that. But uh, one of the big ideas right now is, is it going to be repurposed for something else, something new. Uh, and it's a great location for an ocean rescue, but it's also a great location for a lot of other things. And that hasn't been fully decided yet, but we're, trust me, there'll be something there good. There'll be a that. plan for it. It's there a very valuable good. piece of property. It is. It is. Um, I was actually recently engaged with the county commissioners regarding some lights that you and I have talked about on Citrona. And it prompted me to think when I was on the commission, sometimes there's like some rub between what the city is responsible for and what the county is responsible for. Um, talk to me a little bit about how you feel that relationship is and how you all can collaborate and move forward in a positive way. Mayor Robin, I... I, that's one of the biggest issues I think for me. And, and I think it starts by being nice to each other. It starts from coming from a place of, uh, can we just work together? And I, and I think we can with the county. And I'm really excited the work. We have a new county commission coming in. Two new commissioners are coming in as of next year. And I think that's a great opportunity to start off on, on a good foot with the county commission, because just as much as we pay city taxes, we also pay those county taxes. Mm -hmm. And as a city commissioner and hopefully as mayor, what I want is to make sure that our city residents are getting the value from their county tax dollars. And so there's a way we can be really nice, work together, and make sure that those things are spent appropriately where our fair share uh, comes back to Fernandina Beach. And that's going to happen. I agree. And I hope that it does. Right. <laughs> um, the other thing that I really was thinking about you, Bradley, first of all, I don't know uh, if you remember how we used to run together when oh, you yeah. were a senior in high school. That's right. So I feel like our friendship goes way back mm -hmm. in the dark streets of Citrona. <laughs> um, but it's been so exciting to watch you grow into this role. And now that you've been on the commission already for a year, 
Two years, a year, a year and a half. Two years now. Two and, years. and hey, we didn't just run together back in high school. We, uh, when well, I trained for my marathon. Yeah, you I, trained for yeah. your marathon. I mean, we've yeah. been running together for a long time. Right, exactly. But I was just thinking, you know, what's changed? What have you learned in your two years on the commission? You know, what, what, what has seasoned you to where you are now? Of course. And, and you know, uh, I'll tell you, one of the biggest things you learn by being on the commission is... Uh, not everyone has the same opinion as you. Uh, is, is that crazy? Yeah, when you come so in, crazy. it's crazy. You come it's in crazy. there and, and you think that you know, uh, and, and you know what's the right answer, what's the right course of action. But part of being on the commission is listening to all these different ideas mm -hmm. and how can you come up with the best option given all the expertise that comes together. So I think what's really seasoned me is that uh, I've been faced with opposing ideas uh, and there's places where you compromise and there's places where you don't. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I've learned over the past two years is, is where do you come together and meet and where do you hold your ground and say, this is a non-compromising issue for me. And, and this is something that I'm, I'm willing to fight for. Mm -hmm. Well, good, good. So you've been standing your ground on some things that you're very passionate about. Oh yeah. Just, just, a, just a few things. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, one of them is taxes. And mm -hmm. uh, so that's something that and we, there's been a lot of opposition on taxes. And, and I, what I believe is that we need to make sure that we have enough money to make sure our quality of life is protected and we have enough money. Things like we already talked about, public safety. Can we make sure we make sure that has the money it needs to be mm -hmm. our parks and rec? We need to spend our money on the things that people want and need. But outside of that, do we need to continue to raise taxes to pay for things that maybe we don't? So that's where the debate lies is where do we need to spend tax dollars and what part of the budget do we need to uh, to maybe streamline or, or, mm -hmm. or improve? So, yeah. so that's something I'm willing to uh, stand my ground on, and there's a lot of opposition for that recently. So, well, it's it's a really tough tough it game is. to play, like because things cost money, mm -hmm. and you can't just keep raising it every year. Because if you raise it one percentage every year in 50 years, it's 50 percent more than it was. That's right. You know, I mean. So it is a tough, it's a tough challenge. And I actually encourage you, I think that's where the public private partnerships can come in place. So I applaud this, you know, relationship with uh, the Berkmans to, to get the playground fixed. And we've had a lot of that in our, in our entire city in the last 10 years. We did it with a library. We did it with um, Egan's park. We did it with pirate playground. So it's been done. So let's keep doing, I finding where we can get those people that really want that project. Absolutely. And Mayor Robin, I know you've been a strong advocate for things like that in the past. That's why you're one of my uh, top three favorite mayors. So I, I want to say thank you. Well, thanks. That makes right. me blush a little bit. Thank right. you. <laughs> of course. Well, so if you are elected mayor, um, what do you see your role being and how, how will that play out for you? What, are, what do you think your leadership skills are? Uh, you know, it's all about the tone of the meeting. The mayor runs the meeting here in front of the New Beach. It runs how our whole city operates, the tone in fact, if our whole city is set by how the mayor is able to respond to the citizens, because uh, people have uh, problems, people have issues. And when they come into the city, how will the mayor listen and be able to address these concerns? And that's something that I will do exceptionally well is be able to hear these concerns, listen to the people and be able to address that by uh, making sure that they feel heard, making sure that they uh, that the problems that they bring are addressed, and that's something I'm going to do as mayor. Great, I have I I know that you will. I've I've watched you be a leader in several things, and I I know that you're a good listener, and I know you're very respectful to our citizens. So good luck this year. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Are there any initiatives going on? Again, like I. I really, really feel like a bad citizen because I only pay attention when it's like in my face. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm not upset about Central Park. I was right. like actually supportive of removing the ball fields because um, I'm always opposite of what people right, think. Right, of course. You know, I'm okay to shut Center Street down and make it a public access mm. space um, okay. from the palace down and just have it be a walkway and right. not have cars drive there. But, you know, 85 people lined up my first night as mayor mm -hmm. and all 85 people were against it. Mm -hmm. I was the lone ranger in that. Do you know, do you, you don't remember that? I, I kind of remember that. I was, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I was, uh, might've been there. <laughs> you, you may have said, <laughs> no, I prefer to drive the loop. Right, I prefer exactly, yeah. to drive down and go around the monument right, instead yeah. of, you know, Who making knows? it safe for everyone right. with the railroad crossing. But, um, I, so I really don't know what are like hot topics except for, I mean, I know the parks and recreation thing was a big thing. That is a big thing. Um, are there any other initiatives? How about, Main Street, um, the historic 
like uh, any kind of zoning things going on. Oh yeah. What's happened with? Um, did you guys put a what is it called? Not a more more like a stop on any kind of density approvals? Uh, well, I mean, to, to an extent, yes, yes yeah. and no, yes and no. Well, so like there's been a lot of, uh, with the commission voting, there has been a lot of different projects that were either approved or not approved. And uh, one of the big things that we're doing is septic tanks. We don't like septic tanks, yeah, especially near on. the river, near the marsh. We want to get ready on the sewer, yeah. right? So these new projects that come yeah. in, uh, the question is, should we annex them into the city? And, and there's a weird compromise there, right? Mm -hmm. Sure, they can get slightly more density, but at the same time though, once they join the city, we can get them on the city sewer and stop these marsh front properties from putting septic right. on the marsh, right. which is terrible for the environment. Yeah. So, so there's a compromise there. Can we compromise with these property owners to, they're gonna have to spend a little more money to get on the sewer, but is it worth it in the end? I think yes, and that's something there. So there is a, uh, depending on the project. And I think that's the right way to do it. We have to look at each project, determine is it a good deal for the city of Fernandina Beach? And when it's a good deal, we need to have the flexibility to make sure that uh, we can accept those good deals. We can accept them, but at the same time though, if it's a bad deal, we need to say, hey, that's not gonna work for us, come back with a better one. And uh, and that's what, as, on, as a commissioner, that's something I did several times to a few different uh, projects is I, I met the, the property owner for, for coffee and we talked it through and we determined that I, I thought that some of these like plans would be too dense and said, hey, I, I like that we're gonna get off of septic and onto sewer, but I really think you're asking for too much density and, and, and whatnot. And when they came back with another plan, it was something that was, I think, a better deal for the city of Fernandina Beach. And, and that's what I will continue to do as mayor. I feel like that is a um, big question that people have. Right. Density, you know, and, and it's um, it's weird because I was chatting with a builder slash developer last right. night who was upset with the city. Mm -hmm. But then in the across the room, I was talking with an environmentalist. It's like, too many people are moving here. You know, it's like, it's such a um, delicate balance to um, growth. Growth right. is a really delicate balance. It is. And, and you know, we just identified what's that's, that's a big, it's hard because not everyone's happy. There's a compromise there. Right. But the fact that we have that compromise is part of what makes us special. We have this diverse community, this community of people who, people who love to have a pulp mill, a place to work, people who love to have our beach. There's people of all walks of life. And that's what makes it so hard to find that compromise. But when we do, it makes it something special. You're right. That's the hardest thing. I think that would be the thing that caused me to lose sleep when I was on the right. commission is trying to balance all of those things and, and really worried that you're like making right. the right decision for our future. That's right. It, it is hard sometimes. Uh, they, uh, I think someone once said that uh, a good compromise is where no one ends up happy. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, try, <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to find a, uh, I'm trying to find compromises where, you know, hopefully everyone's happy. That's yeah. the, uh, but you know, sometimes you do gotta, you gotta meet that middle mm -hmm. and that's something that I'm with you. That's the yeah. hard part. Because you have to grow. If you don't grow, you will get passed by, right. you know, and, um, you know, our growth here has led to a lot of great businesses that we have access to right. now. I mean, you know, I love craft beer. We've got all these great breweries. Wow. Can we talk about 8th Street? How much better 8th Street looks? When I drive down 8th Street, I'm like, this, how this road looked 10 years ago and how it looks now and it's like thriving. Right. And that was like, one zoning change. We allowed people to live there. Right. People are literally pushing a jog stroller down 8th Street at 8 o'clock at night, like with their family. That would not have happened 10 years ago. It would not have. It would not So, have, yeah. you know, there's some things you gotta, you have to tweak to grow a little bit. Um, and people sometimes can be adverse to change. They're, they're scared yeah. of it. But then after it settles for a little while, you're like, wow, that really was a good, that was a good, that was a good thing we did. That's right. Yeah. The redevelopment of 8th Street is just it's amazing. Businesses like Makama and, and First Love coming in and, and Hot Pot, they, everybody's dressing themselves up on that street and it, right. it, it looks nice. Right. Having Marlon and Barrel there. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's really exciting. Are there any areas that the commission has identified as redevelopment opportunities? Well, yes. Uh, there's, we're Other doing than some, the CRA. The CRA. Yeah, I was about the to say CRA. the CRA. Exactly. Other than yeah, yeah. the CRA. And Other it, than or, the CRA. Well, I mean, well I'll, I'll, I'll touch on that, but like the CRA itself is actually a really cool project. Mm -hmm. There's a, we're coming down Second Street with new uh, with sidewalks coming into the future and then combine that we talked earlier about the 
about the Riverwalk project. Mm -hmm. If we can get the Riverwalk done, the Second Street improvements, the, the beauty of Center Street, I, I fully believe, can be expounded upon and you can turn the corner and it looks like a whole nother Center Street. That's, that's the vision. And I think yeah. that we might be 10 years out from that, but we gotta start today. Yes. And that's something there. Uh, other things is can we expand the city into the marsh? Can we, uh, there's, a, there's a plan in place. Is there a way that we can uh, acquire uh, very cheap marsh property and maybe possibly do something with that to increase our conservation? I mean, there's something, there's a lot of stuff in the works that we can work on, but as mayor, we hopefully get these good deals for the city that everybody can appreciate. Well, if anybody can do it, Bradley, it's you. I think about how much this has been your home. You were born here, you went to school here, um, you came back to work your very professional job here. Um, and I feel like pretty soon you're gonna be working on, you know, starting a family and, and moving forward. Talk to me about how you see your role on the commission and how that impacts where you are in your life right now. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, is that if there were not so many great jobs right here in front of the beach, this is my hometown. I love living here. I loved growing up here. And when I went off to the University of Florida, I'll, there's job offers for an engineer everywhere. There's, there's job offers in Atlanta and these other big cities. But the crazy thing about our little town of Fernandina Beach is that we have good engineering jobs. We have good jobs of many different types all right here. And, and the fact that we have that diverse economy uh, enables us to bring in uh, people and enables people like myself and other young professionals to come move here, live here and, and raise their own family here. And like you just talked about, uh, I'm really excited to uh, to raise my future family here. I'm getting married later this year, so Yay. I'm very so excited. So I heard. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so very excited about that. So we're, it's it's going to be a great place to live, and it is. I know from living my whole life here so far. So this is a, uh, I'm truly excited to live my life here. Well, you know from being raised here, and I can tell you as a mom with kids, it is such a nice, pleasant place to have your kids. I mean, it's like Mayberry, you right. know, like from the Andy Griffiths show. The kids can ride their bikes, they can go to the playground, they can go to the beach, um, and we have it all. You're exactly right about that diversity too. So we can live, work, and play here. Live, work, and play, that's right. Mm -hmm. It's a, uh, that, that's what, and I think we might have already talked about this, but it's what makes Fernandina Beach special. It's the fact that there is that diversity. And it's the fact that there is, because you, you can go to other places and sure, you can find some beautiful beaches. And, and sure, you can go to other places and find uh, an area with a lot of high paying, uh, good jobs. But there's very few places, and I think Fernandina Beach might be unique. It's it's the place that has it all. It's a place where you can work here, you can uh, you can raise your family here, but it's also a place worth retiring to. It's a place worth living, mm -hmm. and that's uh, and that's what makes us special. Yeah, that's what makes Fernandina great. Absolutely. I really want to say thank you for for being with uh, for having this conversation with us today and uh, for coming. Of course. Coming together. Thank you for inviting me, and I I really appreciate you as a commissioner. The last two years that you've been on the commission, whenever I call with something, you always take my call. You always respond back. So I really thank you for um, being responsive because I'm a I'm a citizen now. I'm a regular citizen. So thank you for always picking up the phone and or emailing me back about things. Well, thank you. That's the one thing that I can guarantee, and, and I've told people this on the campaign trail is I might not always agree a hundred percent. Yeah. But one thing I can guarantee is I'm always going to call you back and listen to the issue because that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, thank you. Thank you. And good luck. Hey, cheers to that. Cheers. I'm Bradley B. And for the past two years, it has been an honor to serve as your city commissioner. When you elected me, I said that I would put Fernadina first. And together, we have. I stood with you to keep the character of Central Park for our children and families. I protected the music downtown by revamping the sound ordinance. And I fought against and will continue to fight against paid parking both at our beautiful beaches and downtown. We've come a long way, but there is still work to be done. We need to stop our endless tax increases while protecting our quality of life. That's why I'm running for mayor. This is my hometown, and as your mayor, I will always put Fernadina first. So, on November 8th, vote Bradley Bean for mayor of Fernadina Beach. Mm -hmm.